damn right. All right, so Kaylin, we're we're gonna dive right in. A whole bunch of Pokemon leaks happened. We don't know if this was intentional. We know that these have been coming out for quite a while now. For quite a while. Um, let's see. We've. Uh, I'm gonna have to look it up. But Pokemon leaks for Pokemon Sun and Moon um, have been coming out, and a lot of interesting stuff has been said. A lot of stuff that I hope is true. So basically, the leaks entail that... <sighs> Hold on, we're, we're gonna find something. Kaylin, entertain the people for me. Entertain the people. Hey, hey, hey. What's the matter when you're fine and you're fine and you look so divine, yeah. Come and get your love. Uh -huh. Come and get your love. Come and get your love. Okay, we're good. <laughs> I found him. Okay, sorry, sorry for the, the unpreparedness. I hope you enjoyed that. It's uh, it's gonna happen a lot. Um, anyway, so we're talking Chinese rumors and leaked starters, leaked starter evolutions and shit like that. Um, so basically, there's a whole bunch of concept art that was leaked and it shows the final evolution or so what seems to be the final evolution for the three brand new starters and uh, they look really good yes, I'm gonna they have do. I'm gonna have them show up on the bottom of the screen underneath there I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like um, but there's a lot of other information that may also be true but also take this with a grain of salt because these are leaks these are leaks we are going to be talking about what this means for Pokemon Sun and Moon as an entity and what it means. But right now, let's just run through the leaks real quick. So basically, uh, in Sun and Moon, apparently, the anime's Ash Greninja will appear in the game. That's exciting. Which is pretty cool. I like how he looks. Really cool coloring on him. All right, so, and there's a whole lot of Alolan uh, types, uh, forms. So basically, Rattata and Raticate are dark type. The Alolan, Rattata and Raticate. Mm -hmm. Hopefully looks really cool. Uh, Alolan Butterfree is bug psychic like she should have been from the beginning. Um, and then there's Alola, Abracadabra, and Alakazam are fighting type. Nidoking, Nidoqueen are poison fighting instead of poison ground. Uh, Growlithe and Arcanine are now water type. Doduo and Dod Dodrio are fighting flying. Um, and those can only be accessible for people taking those Pokemon from previous games. Hmm. That's what it says. The, the, the pre- Oh, no, wait, just kidding. Not those. I'm just kidding. That was a lie. I lied to you. What I'm saying is the previous versions of those Pokemon, I read that wrong, the previous versions of those Pokemon can only, um, will be only accessible by bringing them in from older games. So, you can only get, like, the normal types of all those. Like, Fire, uh, Arcanine. It's the original. Um, yeah, so basically the originals, and you'll have to bring them in, which is to I'm totally cool with, um, because... All the new forms I'm super into so far. Uh, but the rest of the leaks pretty much um, is a bunch of different types of Pokemon, like like the new, brand new Pokemon. Um, there's going to be a Snowman Pokemon, and there's going to be a Sea Cucumber, a Dolphin, a Mushroom, and a Rugby Monkey. Please God, let there be a rugby monkey. <laughs> did you see the uh, the sandcastle Pokemon as well? I did. I did yeah. see the sandcastle Pokemon. Looks pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Not gonna lie. It's like a well, muck. muck. Yeah. Uh, a sand, a sandy muck. Um, but anyway, so continuing on with the leaks, these are like the final ones. We're gonna run through all these and then we're gonna unpack them um, all together. So basically, there's. In the Alolan region, so there's four islands, there's going to be no traditional gyms and no Pokemon leagues, which I'm super excited for. Like, yeah. it's so cool. Um, and your goal is basically to create the gym Elite Four infrastructure, apparently. Um, and so the next leak, the final starter evolutions, as you guys saw before, um, will be based off an archer, a wrestler, and a siren, which are... Really cool. The archer will be the grass type, wrestler will be the fire type, and the siren's going to be the water type. Um, and 
the best news out of all of this. Please God, let this be true. Rock Ruff, the uh, the rock dog Pokemon, his evolution is a werewolf. Oh God, please be true. <laughs> that sounds so cool. God, yeah, it sounds so that. cool. Yeah. So Rock Ruff's evolution is apparently a werewolf, which I am so down for. Um, so basically, do we think these these leaks are true, Caitlin? I'd have to say that they are. Yeah. But, um, you know, just just because the history of you know, like when X and Y things were getting leaked left and right to generate mm -hmm. more uh, stir before the release was, and uh, yeah. you know, people in Japan, uh, they can't keep shit a secret when it comes <laughs> to Pokemon. It's such a small island, man. No one can keep you a secret. No, it's like high, it's like high school, but well, a it's just it's just like uh, X and Y when they were coming out with all this stuff. They were they were releasing stuff like Tyrant and the other fossil Pokemon were released. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. And uh, the evolution for the starters were released quite early, so we got to pretty much develop what, who we were going to start with at the beginning. And mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, I, I, I have a firm belief that most of these are true. Mm -hmm. However, I don't think that the uh, the art on them or the the actual physical appearance of them are final. I think okay. I think the fighting Alakazam might not be true i don't know i just it's something, yeah, something about the alakazam kind of looks a little more fake mon mm -hmm. um but all the other ones that i've seen like the uh marowak fire oh I mean, that god was, that, I was, that was confirmed like this morning and i'm so happy yeah and that that looks great it looks so good um, but yeah i mean it i love I, I mean i love it i think it looks mm -hmm. i think it looks great yeah no I'm, I'm super into it and uh like I do, I do hope all those are true because those shake up the formula so hardcore. So let's move on. All right, we've we've discussed the leaks. We hope they are true because they look really good. Um, they look incredible. So let's talk about what Pokemon Sun and Moon. What does it mean, and what is it like? How does this look like? How is this going to shape Pokemon moving forward? Is what I'm really asking because Pokemon Sun and Moon has literally thrown the format of Pokemon out the window. It's just like, nah, we're just gonna have four islands and that's it. And I love that. And I fucking love it. And is this a, a direct, you know, um, is it a direct action based on the failings of Nintendo? I think so. I think it's... They need to shake the formula I think, up? I think it's you know? Nintendo starting to clean house. I think it's Nintendo trying to grab uh, its older audience back into the fray. Um, you see yeah. a lot of the old, you know, you always had the, the uh, I call them the pure ones, the original one, the, 151. The Gen 1ers. Yeah, the, uh, the first <sighs> Geners. They're trying to grab that audience back, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And uh, you saw, you know, Gen 1 was kind of a one palette type uh Top generation, so they're, it was. they're they're bringing a lot more of the new and mixing it up, and I think it's really cool because I mean it's like one of who was supposed to be on this podcast, our friend Christian <laughs> uh, was saying that you have different deer, different like types of deer in America and uh, or in different countries. There's all kinds mm -hmm. of different types of deer, and this is kind of what you're seeing with Pokemon. It, they're doing it region based. You know, some uh, types of Pokemon will excel in different regions causing a new type of species. So yeah. I think that's really cool that they're adding that and they're also throwing the game on its head giving everybody a new way to play and it's a lot it, it, it's definitely a lot more exciting to have something refreshing and something new because it's oh, been yeah. the same fucking game uh, for the past every, every time. single time and it was getting I mean I was about to wash my hands clean after X and Y I was like Right, I was dude. Like, right, same. I sold my 3DS. I was done with it, and this is starting to, you know, kind of reel me back in because they, mm -hmm. they're, they're kind of like, okay, we've we've done this time and time again. It's time to, you know, shake up the formula a little bit. I also think yeah. this is going to be the beginning. This this is going to be a new beginning for Pokemon. I think after this generation, yeah. we're going to see a complete wipe of the slate. I think they're going to, I think yeah. this is going to be the last Pokemon with Ash as canon. Um, and we're going to see a completely yeah. different era of Pokemon ushered in that will kind of hopefully be more of an adult game, but I doubt it. But 
Yeah, I was about to say. But it, it, we'll, and, we'll yeah. see. Hopefully, that the the universe will be kind of wiped out, and they will. Yeah. They'll bring in another uh, 150 for a new generation. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. No, I, I dig that, and like it kind of goes hand in hand with what you were saying. Is like you're hoping it goes for more of an adult audience, and if you kind of look at how Pokemon has been marketed, I guess you could say, in the past year, since it's its 20th anniversary this year, um, it's been a lot of, like, how can I say this? Very, ex- like, mainstream acceptable advertisements. Like, remember the Super Bowl commercial? Mm-hmm. Which was probably to get people ready for Pokemon Go, but it was a really cool trailer that was not kitty at all it wasn't it was just a trailer and it was good Mm -hmm. and with pokemon go you know being the goliath that it is you know they're they're realizing that they still have the same pull with older people younger people pretty much anybody you know pokemon still excites people is what i'm trying to say and it may be because it was just like you know a cell phone gimmick but Making two hundred million dollars in revenue in one month is not just because of a gimmick. It is because Pokemon still has a lot of uh, it still has appeal and it still has you know buying power. So you know what Sun and Moon means for me, man, because like this is how I'm seeing it shaping up. They are getting weird. That was my d- <laughs> hello, Lincoln. Um, they're getting weird. And I mean that in the best way possible, because I like weird. Like, weird is where Nintendo shines, is being fucking odd, and blazing a new trail or something, or shaking the formula up. And this is what Sun and Moon is doing, is it's like, it's like, oh, you guys are tired of the eight gems and four, you know, the Elite Four? Fuck that! There's, that's not even a thing anymore. Um, and, oh man, so like, what I really hope for this game is that it just it stays weird and it's just like whatever like let's just make something new and that the like the trials in each island are like really well written side stories <clears throat> which i really hope is real you know like i really hope they're just well written side stories because i feel like nintendo is going through this transition period where it's looking at what el- what is working out there and trying to implement that into their games like hence why Zelda Breath of the Wild looks like fucking The Witcher 3, like, with its denseness and its and its colors and, you know, the style of game that it looks like it's going to be. It looks like they're trying to take influence from outside sources while staying true to their formula, which is good, which is where they need to be, you know? To improve, you kind of got to see what's working for other people if nothing's working for you. So Sun and Moon, man, I'm telling you what. I like where it's going. Well, I mean, and I like where it's going. Well, I mean, it's kind of remarkable that you uh, that you brought up the the Super Bowl commercial because I completely forgot about it. But I remember seeing that, and I'm like, this isn't geared towards uh, towards no. kids at all. I mean, if if you no. if I was a child, I wouldn't know if like, oh, okay, that's that's not Pokemon commercial. But yeah. you know, as a as a as a 23 year old adult, I'm like, that's mm. fucking. Po-. I'm like, it, 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 that's great. It, yeah, it, it brings <laughs> back like the synth. The, like it. It, you know, it kind of jars that kid in you who was playing on the Game Boy Color and was playing mm-hmm. on the car rides to fucking Pizza Farm or whatever. <laughs> and uh, you kind of like it. It, it, it kind of ignites that that nostalgia in you. And so I think yeah. that's the audience that they were trying to grab. And it feels kind of like uh, I don't know, like a reunion show of an old sitcom type. Dude, type feel. straight up, yeah. And so totally. I feel like I, I feel like they're they're setting this up to end it. But bring it back for a for a for a different audience, um, which is to me is exciting. But the, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm definitely on board with what you're saying about yeah. the, about the trials and the islands and everything. Yeah, it's, totally. It's God. a different uh, Far Cry from what they're used to doing, and it's definitely going mm-hmm. to uh, intrigue a lot more players. Yeah, no, I'm I'm 100% in. And uh, what you said um, about like you're thinking they're going to reboot it. Remember, if you did keep up with what I was saying during last week's wrap-up, Nintendo has announced that within the six months of the launch of the NX, they're going to be releasing Zelda, Mario, and a Pokemon game for the NX. So, this reboot that we think we're talking about, this this universe wipe, 
which I don't think they will wipe all the Pokemon, no. but they'll wipe they'll wipe like where it's being taken place, how the games play, how things are going. That may be what it is. Well, Sun and Moon's like the last hurrah, and then they're moving it to the NX. Well, exactly. I, this is this, yeah, this is a very interesting point that you bring up because with the 3DS, you know, starting to already have its 3DS selects and its uh, yeah. and its uh, greatest hits and everything, the console is going to be put into a corner and it's going to be left there to kind of run its life cycle and then phase out. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you know, and you see how Zelda is kind of like uh, this post-apocalyptic, like something's happened in the Zelda world. Yeah. And it's kind of like you see all these remnants, and that's why I feel like the new Pokemon game is going to be. Because if you think about it, X and Y, the 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 weapon that they were trying to use, oh yeah, yeah, player, they were trying to wipe out all life, and they really were. And like, start a new Jesus. So I feel like Chill, something bro. is going to happen in regards to that weapon, and it's going to. You're still going to have all your species so, of Pokemon, but there's going to they're going to be yeah, totally. more, you know, more rare they're gonna be more there's gonna be like a mm -hmm. pikachu over in a fucking desert somewhere trying to find some water and you're gonna find yeah. it and you know it's it's it'll be more like you'll be i feel like the new pokemon game is gonna be you trying to find like you're gonna be placed in this new world and you're gonna be like what the fuck are these creatures but you're gonna like have yeah. callbacks like that's a fucking pikachu oh, God. that's a fucking Gyarados. and you're gonna find it's gonna i mean that's what i feel like the new pokemon game is gonna be but this Dude. is what the pokemon Sun and Moon oh, is setting up, and you see, mm -hmm. um, I watched an interesting video, it's very cringy, but uh, someone <laughs> brought to light that uh, during the conference when they released the E3 trailer, that all will, uh, I can't remember how they were, that all will come together and end or something like that uh, mm -hmm. in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and so... There's a lot of speculation that Lugia and Ho-Oh will make an appearance. With Lugia and Ho-Oh are, there's bound to be the other legendary birds and yeah. legendary dogs. And I think, and mm. you have a lot of, lot just a lot of little things that we'll, we'll probably see. We'll probably see uh, Groudon and Kyogre and Rayquaza. We'll probably see all the legendaries somehow Jesus. in this right here. Oh my god. Um, so yeah, what, uh, oh man, what if, what I'm trying to say, so you like, I had something I was going to say and I totally forgot. Anyways, um, so you're, you're thinking like the NX, oh, that's what it was. Oh man, with the NX, that's what it was. So what you just reminded me of, like you're talking like, you know, oh, hello. Um, you're talking like Pokemon are going to be super rare. What if? Because I've always thought about this, like how in how intriguing this would be. Move the timeline back to when the Pokeball was invented. Mm -hmm. Because imagine a world where Pokeballs do not exist and there are no Pokemon trainers and they live in this world with these things. How do you contain them from destroying everything or how do you, how do, you do anything? You know, what was the Pokemon world like before Pokeballs? And I wonder what if they could make the next Pokemon game just reset the timeline back to the beginning, and you know you could play as the 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 scientist that is going out and training and trying to find this thing. He captures the first Pokemon, and that's your starter. Well, is it's should you bring it up? Uh, Magirna, uh, one of the Pokemon, is considered to be uh, a scientist's experiment uh, to try and harness the power of a pokemon into energy and trap it inside a containment and so that was that that scientist was actually trying to create the first pokeball and ended up creating a whole entirely different pokemon that was yeah. actually a i mean he created another pokemon a magirna so, yeah what is magirna. it called magirna magirna m-a-g-e-a-r-n-a oh that. yep Oh, for real? I yes. never, I've never even like researched this Pokemon before. Mm -hmm. He was. Uh, if you go and watch, it's on the movie. Ah, um, uh, gotcha. That scientist was. That scientist was trying to create the first Pokeball. So that if they could go back in time and show that story. Oh cool. my God! Did we just come up with like a conspiracy theory? <laughs> No, I mean that's that's an, that's an actual. Thing. Is that an actual theory? Oh my god, that's Not so actual, amazing. That's actual like Pokemon lore. Is that guy was trying to create the first Pokeball, and Magirna is. Uh, oh my god. 
uh, he was trying to like I think it was like a lull punny or whatever that he was trying bunny. to okay. like harness in a pokeball mm-hmm. and he was he ended up making Magirna on accident while trying to contain it. So it's like a man, yeah, it's that's weird. so neat. Mm-hmm. Like, what if the NX game is your him? And you just create the first Pokeball, and you watch the world, like, transform, and you witness the Kanto War, and you, you know, you, there's so many things that they can do, and I just, I want them to do them. Please. Reggie. Fiz- Fizume? Is that what his name is? Fizume? I don't know. Whatever. Reggie wouldn't have a say in this. <laughs> Oh, Reggie, let him know. I know you watch. So Reggie would be like, can you do this? He'd be like, <laughs> what about Federation Force? <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Get back to work on Metroid Prime, the sequel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but yeah, so, I don't know, man. I think what we've just, I think, oh, God, I'm just, the potential for where this is going is so promising because not only is it is Sun and Moon completely different from what it is, we're getting one on the NX. We all think it's going to reset some kind of timeline, reset something. So we've got, we've got time of extreme change coming our way, which I'm so okay with. And let's be real here. Can we just be real? Can we just be honest? Fire Ghost Marowak is the greatest thing to happen in the history of Pokemon. That thing looks so tight, man. I'm so excited. Look how cool he is, man. So uh, awesome. Ice, Steel, Sand Slash, man. That's oh, yeah. what's up. That is really cool. And that Vulpix. So yeah, I mean, one oh thing we, we haven't really touched upon is how we feel about the new, uh, the new Pokemon, though. The new how Pokemon? You... Like the new, new Pokemon or the new old Pokemon? New old, I mean, the new Pokemon, there's some cool ones, but mm-hmm. there's, I mean, you know, they're kind of running out of ideas here, mm-hmm. to be honest. I, I actually think this is the strongest generation of new Pokemon since, mm-hmm. like, Hoenn. Like, I'd, I say, did... I'd say Black and White had, its, had the strongest... Black and white had a lot of good ones, but I like mean, fucking I, Bisharp and High Dragon yeah. or and uh, Gal Galvantula. Galvantula's fucking great. Galvantula, I was hoping you'd be in this. I Dude. still hope he's in. I love Galvantula. Yeah, Stole Galvantula's me. great and Bravaria or something. However you say the eagle, mm-hmm. um, and then but, Scrafty. Scrafty's the my dog. I love Scrafty. That defense though. But you wonder what they're... I mean, honestly, I, I don't know if this has been touched upon. I wonder what they're going to do with uh, Gengar. Uh, mm. Well, he did get him, a Mega. He did get a Mega, but I wonder if they're going to make him Dark-type or oh, Psychic. What if he's like a Tiki? He's a Tiki ghost man. That'd be really cool. That'd be really cool, actually. Uh, that's what I'd say. Just let us make your new Pokemon game, Nintendo. Just Sharkpool Gaming presents Pokemon Brown. It's just a diglet. <laughs> the, diglet was, is... <laughs> the biggest nightmare that I'm like waiting for is when they're like, new diglet, and it's just a fucking diglet in blue. He's just like. <laughs> I want a diglet that is on a cloud, so you don't even, you still don't know what he is below. <laughs> diglet in the water. He just comes out and goes. <laughs> oh, God, so, I love it. Game of Pass, you got any parting words on Pokemon? Yes. Or Ladies else? and gentlemen, this episode of Sharp Pool Pipeline ga- uh, Games Cat. Games Cat. Games Cat! Oh, God! Yeah! No! <laughs> this episode of Sharp Pool Pipeline Podcast is brought to you by Keystone. He's got a fucking brand. I know he has great. brand deal. Motherfucker. He's hiding the money from I don't believe a goddamn brand deal. It's fine. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was Sharkwell Gaming's one and only podcast, Pipeline. I hope you guys enjoyed your time with us. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You will be notified every single time we put a brand new video up. And we've got a lot of great stuff coming up for you. So go, go over to the channel, hit subscribe, hit like. Let us know what you guys want to hear next from the dynamic duo here at SharkpoolGaming.com. And as always, thank you for watching. See you.